This week marks one year since I first started hosting the show. Hard to believe they let me stay this long, I know. On my very first show, I was joined by the big three of Beacon Hill, the leaders of the House, Senate, and Governor. Charlie Baker wasn't able to join us tonight. We'll catch up with him soon. But with me now are the state's big two, House Speaker Robert DeLeo <laughs> and Senate <laughs> President Stan Rosenberg. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Happy back. anniversary. Thank Happy you so to much. to be here with you. Great to see you both. Can we start with some current events, and then we'll step back into a bigger thing? Yesterday, the uh, T, the keyboard that was created with your help but Baker's suggestion approved almost a 10 percent increase in fares. Do you support this Mr. Speaker? Um, I've said it all along that I felt that T increases really should be the f last option open uh, but having said that uh, when we formed the uh, control board yeah. one of the messages that we want to get across was we had to bring some type of uh, control and better fiscal management so, um, so you're okay with this? So I'm okay, yeah. Are I'm you? Okay too it. high, too high, even by the T's own estimation, about six million rides a year are going to fall off the table here because uh, people are not going to be able to afford those fare increases. You know, even, so you say it's okay, you say it's too high. Well, but I think I said it should be the last resort, but last, that's okay. I, I know I got that, but, but, but at the same time, you read that if they raise, what, 50 million bucks from this, the backlog of repairs is seven billion. I did the math. That's 140 times this fare increase. Yet you say you're with the governor, Mr. Speaker. You don't think we need new taxes to fix this third world T infrastructure. I say at this time we don't need new taxes. What does that mean? What, I, what, what that means is, I felt before we get into talking about new taxes or fees, especially as related to the T, it was necessary for us to get the T house in order. Namely, let's get that fiscal control board. Uh, underway. Let's see what they can do in terms of saving money. And it appears as though they're doing a very good job. But of at the that. end of the day, they're not going to find $7 billion in savings. Probably not. But at, in that day, maybe that's be something we'll talk about in the future. But right now, what I'm saying is most important that they get their own house in order by their own means before you're talking about giving them an out in terms of just deciding that. Uh, to raise revenue. You're not waiting. Way. You're talking about them now, right? Well, money bills start in the House, and uh, so since I don't expect to see a money bill, uh, it's off the table for this uh, this year. But uh, I think we're going to have to get to it soon. Uh, very favorable borrowing rates for doing capital projects and things like this. So we we really ought to get to this uh, as soon as we can. But I, it's clear it's not happening this year. Is he year. making a mistake by waiting? I think the sooner that we can get to it, the better. That said, the control board, I think, overall is doing a good job. And I agree that their job first is to put as much in place as possible to save as much money as possible. But I'm I'm from the beginning, I've been saying we cannot reform our way out of this problem. But reform has to be done. While that's being done, we should be getting some more money so into the system. Let's stay on money for a second. This is a ballot question, and whether or not it, uh, a constitutional amendment makes it to the ballot, in part, is dependent upon you guys. It's got to pass two constitutional conventions. A billion and a half dollars a year, millionaires tax. Do you support it? Yes. Do you? I will be, I believe. Uh, I think uh, right now I've spoken to some of the folks who want to sit down and talk to me about the issue, but I'm expecting that it it will uh, go to our vote in Constitutional Convention, and quite frankly, just needing 50 votes, I'm pretty confident it will get the 50 votes. And if uh, Speaker often doesn't vote, but you would uh, support yes. it. Let's stay on money for a second. Uh, education, which is something that probably matters to everybody sitting at home. I know you've, uh, you're have you concerned about the higher education budget. Let's talk K through 12. As a campaigner, Charlie Baker, Mr. Speaker, said, we're going to have education funding grow at the same rate as state revenues grow. They grew at 4.3%. His Chapter 70 so-called education money grew at 1.6%. That's $120 million dollar differential. We're seeing the consequences in places like Boston where a thousand kids left school to march yesterday. Are you going to challenge Baker on this thing? Uh, we, we, the budget is in our court right now. Um, in terms of what's going to be the final product by uh, a month or so from now, I'm not sure. But I will tell you that's one of the uh, items that we're, we are taking a look at. Do you think you broke a commitment, a campaign pledge? Uh, I'm not sure if I would go that far. Uh, but uh, again, let me just say that I think that that's something we have a house have to take a look at. I think what, uh, obviously, I think that local aid in Chapter 70 are probably two of the most important items that we address each and every year, and probably the two most important items to the members. Did Baker break a campaign pledge? I think he's done the best he can with the dollars that are available, but there aren't enough dollars. This has been framed as a spending problem year after year after year. The reality is, 
if as hard as he worked and as many counts as he level funded or cut, he could still only come up with less than half of what he wanted to put in K through 12, then it's not a spending problem, it's a revenue problem. Are you, you know, the one place, uh, I read a lot about you from in the newspapers and see on television. Don't believe everything And some of it's true, but most of it isn't. <laughs> this is the huge <laughs> divide. You think you need money for a ton of things and you need it now. You seem to care about the same things that he does, but you've joined the governor in saying no I new taxes. I don't joined the governor. This is my belief in terms of I agree with the governor, if that's what you mean. Why, why do you uh, think it? Because, uh, again, what I see right now in terms of revenue, what's going on in the Commonwealth, as I travel not only in my own own district but throughout the Commonwealth I hear consistently from you know from families in terms of the still having difficulties in terms mm -hmm. of making ends meet talking about educa education talking about health care um, so uh, I think right now we have to get our fiscal house in order and then we'll move from there you know when I was preparing for this interview I was deciding what's the thing I want to hit him hardest on and I decided what me it was. or him both of you both oh, okay. I was gonna say <laughs> that it is unconscionable that when everybody in the state agrees one of the greatest crises we're facing is the opioid epidemic the fact that you guys have not seen fit to even report out a bill and then I learned five minutes ago that as we speak Tonight, the bills, look at the smiles on their faces, are being reported out. A couple of questions, Mr. Speaker, and then uh, Senate President. Uh, two of the centerpieces of Charlie Baker's uh, proposal, the most controversial, 72-hour involuntary hold, limit of 72-hour for first opioid prescriptions. Are either of those in the final version? No. Why not? No, I believe, if I'm correct, that the House version, uh, which, was, which we agreed to before, mm -hmm. would be in there. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> quite frankly, I saw the 24 uh, our uh, treatment that the House had placed in, in for the prescriptions of uh, seven days. And that's in the final version? That would be both the agreed. final version. What are the other centerpieces of this thing, Mr. President? So we agreed with both of those. We thought they were good constructs, and uh, the governor started that process. The House improved it. Uh, so we also have partial fills, so the doc and the, and the patient can talk about what that particular patient will need. And let's say it's 30 pills, and the prescription is for 60 pills. They can go to the uh, pharmacist, and uh, the pharmacist can give them uh, only as many as they would like to take home. That's the same thing that uh, Senator Warren and Congresswoman Clark are trying to do in Washington, and it was based on the debate we had in the Massachusetts Senate uh, a couple of months ago. So, you know what else, yeah, uh, sure. Jim, if I may? Sure. Uh, but don't, you know, I realize that uh, this is a very important subject, and you know, hopefully we could have got it done sooner. But this has been one of those subject matters where I think everyone agrees we had to do something. Mm -hmm. But I will also tell you, at least what I heard from, from my membership and possibly what Stan heard from his, a lot of people had a lot of different opinions in terms of what was sure. the final, what was to be the final resolution. So uh, although it may have seemed like an easy uh, situation because, of course, everyone said we have to do something yeah. about substance abuse, it wasn't so easy in terms of, you know, the particular parameters of the bill. When and, you the heard, governor, yes. and by the way, the governor came back from the National Governors Association and said, based on the conversations there, what we were working in Massachusetts on was going to be the most aggressive program of fixes and assistance in the whole country, and the whole country is going to be watching when this bill comes into law. Mm -hmm. You're going to see this replicated all across the country. Well, I hope it is as strong as he and you both suggest. You know, when you're here in July, I asked you a personal question. Let's pull that up if we can. Here are the Speaker and Senate President in July last year. Do you like each other? Are you friends? We're becoming friends. We, we barely you? knew each other. Oh, are you friendly? Do we're you going look? out to eat later. We're going oh, you are going to come? Yeah. You're going tonight to go to dinner? Yeah. We didn't Who's the guy in the gray suit over there? Say, it's like unbelievable. He's not going out to eat tonight. Okay, so are you, are you friends? Friend, what are you? I mean, this is a pretty important relationship. What are you? I mean, you're different styles. I mean, you are sort of, in, in many ways, a more traditional leader. He's like a thousand, let a thousand flowers bloom kind of guy. Does that, I'm, no, I'm you sure are. I don't mean that. I come was, from the valley. That's okay, what we do in the valley. How do you, and I'm how, a with the previous how do, guy. do you like him? <laughs> I do. Uh, believe it or not, I do. Uh, <laughs> believe uh, it or Does okay. that help? I mean, does it that does. help the work? I, I think, in all seriousness, yeah. I think one of uh, are we different folks, we come from different areas. Yeah. We were joking one day. The people in my district sometimes say that I, you know, they think I'm a little too liberal. Mm -hmm. And he was they telling think me I'm too conservative. conservative. They you think know? I gave so up I think the it's ghost. funny. But bottom line, although maybe our philosophies uh -huh. may be somewhat different. Uh, personally, <clears throat> if anyone would ever ask me, I think he's, We're a, doing great. I think he's a real good guy. We're doing great. Is there anything, what drives you crazy about him? Nothing. Honestly, what drives Nothing. you? Nothing. What drives you crazy about him? Fine. Okay, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Uber. 
Uh, no uh, uh, background that, checks, yes, <laughs> but no uh, fingerprinting in your bill, even though police chiefs, including Bill Evans, wants it, the taxi cab drivers in Boston want it. Quickly, why no fingerprints? Uh, that, that is not in the legislation as pr presently written. Yeah, right. Uh, whether that would, uh, you know, there are a number of things that could happen tomorrow relative to if an amendment should come up. Maybe it will be no fingerprinting, maybe it will be an order of fingerprinting, or maybe we'll leave it up to the cities and towns. So I'm presuming that we're going to have a discussion and a debate on that Do you tomorrow. support fingerprinting being added? Um, I would, my own gut yes. reaction would be uh, relative to probably leaving it up to the cities and towns. How about you? Is it going to be in the same I think version? we should look at it seriously, and I'm inclined to think it's a good idea. If we're doing it for taxi drivers, I don't know why we wouldn't do it for the Uber drivers. We're trying to create a fair and level playing field uh, for these two forms of transportation, which look very, very similar, except for the way that they're you know, structured financially and, and in terms of corporate. But they're doing the same job. They're, t they're picking people up and delivering someplace. The rules ought to be roughly comparable. That's right. uh, when I say fingerprinting, I'm saying if they, they should, I don't believe they should require for the Uber and not the taxi. So whatever it's good for one should be good for the and other. And it is good for but, taxi but drivers that, in Boston. That's what I so that, okay, fine. Yeah. So based upon what we just saw a couple of minutes ago, are you going out to dinner tonight together Can't. again? No. I have to go speak somewhere else. Is that made up or is that true? No, no, that's honest to God. That's true. true. Do you know yeah, what we all yeah. learned? And the I don't three need of us anymore. Do so you want to say what the, we found out the three of us had in common? Do you know what we have no. in common? We learned before the interview? Oh, yes. Oh, Where'd yeah. you get your suit? Joseph A. Bank. Where'd you get Joseph your suit? Joseph A. Bank. Thank you very much. Good to see you, okay. Mr. President. Uh, when do I get my commission check on that one? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it's nice good to, to see you, you as always. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.